it's never too early for predictions, and I have one for Luther Burden for week one of the Mizzou football season, plus some more movement on the hardwood for Dennis Gates and company. I've got all this and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks so much for making this show your first listen every day. And thanks for telling a friend, unlike Netflix stock, our ratings are actually trending up. You got to love that. So thank you very much to all you new people out there. And again, thank thanks to all you longtime listeners for telling a friend. And you know what? I've got some vivid dreams today. Maybe it's 420 is getting to me. I don't know, but something about it. I'm really excited about week one of the Missouri football season and probably the number one reason for that. You guessed it, Luther Burden. And did you know, I got a little bit of trivia for you here early on in the show. Did you know that Missouri did not have a 100 yard receiver in all of 2021? In fact, you got to go all the way back to the 2020 Arkansas game, the thriller Missouri won 50 to 48 in Columbia. By the way, just touching on that game a little bit here, just to digress, I think I probably should have given Eli Drinkwitz a little bit more credit for his coaching job in that game when I was sort of breaking down his offensive acumen, if you will. Let's face it, 50 points against any, any opponent in this conference is always impressive, especially, let's face it, Missouri had to pull that game out at the end, setting up the thicker kicker for the victory. So a tip of the cap to Eli there for sure. Just wanted to digress there for a little bit. But the main point there, again, got to go all the way back to that game. Kiki Chisholm at 113 yards against the Razorbacks that day. And the previous week, well, Tyler Beatty had 102 yards receiving against Vanderbilt, again, as Missouri's backup running back. So it's been a bit of a drought as far as big-time wide receiver production at Missouri for some time now. I would say you almost have to go back to Emmanuel Hall to go for a, a guy who was a true game-breaker. And, of course, we all know that Hall had a lot of injury questions throughout his career and, and difficulties. And in fact, I believe Hall officially retired from pro football the other day, trying trying his hand at that game. So, you know, basically good luck to Emmanuel for, for whatever he decides to do with the rest of his professional life. Now, again, going back to Luther Burden, I actually think this is going to be the end of the streak. I think he gets over 100 yards for Missouri in week one so that whatever it's been over a season's worth of games now where Missouri hasn't had a 100-yard receiver, I really think Burden takes that down in week one and has a very Jeremy Macklin-like debut. You might remember Macklin's first game at Missouri, 2007, an electric debut, not only as a receiver, but as a punt returner as well. He brought one back against Illinois in his hometown in the Dome. Now, obviously, Missouri doesn't have that kind of opponent in week one. Louisiana Tech, not a good defense, so that makes me all the more confident in predicting that Burden is going to have a massive, massive week one. I also think Drinkwitz and the Missouri program in general has all the incentive in the world to show off their new toy, if you will, their new shiny player in Luther Burden, the glittering star that he we he hope he's going to be. And, of course, I'm buying into the hype completely. I think Burden is going to be an excellent, excellent player for Missouri. And, a thousand yard type receiver in in the first season with the Tigers. And also I think a game breaker is a punt returner at the very least as well. So I have higher standards for the guys, no question about it. So to me, if you're Missouri, you're Eli Drinkwitz, you've been what? Basically one game under 500, I believe so far in his Missouri tenure. You want to have a good year three. You want to get off to a, a, a fast start. Week two in Manhattan, Kansas looms. I think you want to, 
whoever your quarterback is, by the way, whether it's Brady Cook, whether it's somebody not on the roster yet, maybe it's who knows, who knows who the quarterback is in week one. It's looking like Brady Cook at this point. But regardless, whoever it is, you want to have that guy play with a little bit of confidence in week one. And what better way than to design some plays where hopefully Luther Burden gets some deep shots downfield, takes it to the house maybe a time or two, and gets, as I'm predicting, in week one for Missouri, over 100 yards receiving. By the way, speaking of the quarterback position, I promise this will be the absolute last thing I say about JT Daniels on this program unless Missouri ends up playing West Virginia in a bowl game or something, okay? I'm off the topic. He's he's not going to Missouri, but I have seen some people online push back against my opinion, which, hey, fine and dandy, but don't throw the quarterback wins statistic at me. I've seen... I saw one guy in particular on YouTube saying that, well, Daniels is 7-0 and 0 as a quarterback at Georgia. What more do you need to know? Well, first of all, let, let's actually check the facts here because I'm only seeing six starts for JT Daniels at Georgia. So forgive me if, I'll, if I'm not counting the spring game, if maybe you're throwing one of those in there. So first of all, if you're going to throw the quarterback win stat at me, at least get the correct amount. So, okay, fine and dandy. He is undefeated. So, point taken there but let's actually look at his opponents okay Daniel's first start against Mississippi State hey throws for 400 yards that's pretty impressive and a seven point Georgia victory fine and dandy I'll give him some credit there no doubt about it South Carolina throws for 139 yards not all that impressive no again another huge blowout victory for Georgia in a season of quite a few of them I hate to say it, Missouri, also a non-competitive game, 49-14. to 14. I broke down the Peach Bowl in detail, and that's it. Those are his four starts in 2022. Not exactly a murderer's row of opponents there. No offense to all you Missouri fans out there like myself. Now we move forward to 2021. Well, Georgia scored 10 points in the opener against Clemson. Now, at the time, you might have thought, well, hey, it's the opener. Clemson's number three in the country, but as we found out, the Clemson Tigers weren't all that good last season. In fact, they were about a 500 ball club. If memory serves, Daniels threw for all of 135 yards in that game. To be fair from him, to be fair to him, I should say, he was definitely suffering from an oblique injury. He suffered from it throughout the whole season. He started again against South Carolina in week three, and that's it, folks. Those are his starts at Georgia. Again, so my point is, in the one game against Cincinnati in the Peach Bowl, where JT Daniels, to me, when Georgia had a, a at least a, a close battle in terms of overall talent, unlike the games that I just listed off for you for the most part, maybe Clemson aside, well, it just didn't look that all that good to me. So, again, if you're Missouri, you're going to have even talents, even talents, or maybe a deficit in most of your football games next season. So that's the reality. That was my point. If you want to disagree with me, fine. But again, don't tell me the 7-0 and when really he was 6-0, and number one. And also, let's put all those games in context, too. Let's not act like, well, he won six games, and therefore he's the, what, greatest quarterback in SEC history. I'm not really sure what point you're trying to make there. And coming up, if you thought Conzo Martin reset the Missouri basketball roster this past season, well, Dennis Gates said, hold my mugs up root beer because, my goodness, it seems like every single day we have news on some player going, some people, some people coming, all kinds of stuff. So let's update you with the latest news, the latest trans- transfer from Clemson, as well as Again, so much happening. I actually neglected to mention a transfer yesterday and another transfer happening out of the program. So again, let's move to the hardwood. But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market. I promise you, I've tried every single protein bar on the planet. Don't look it up. It's true. I promise you. And that you know what? Built Bar is just the best by far. Not only is it covered in 100% chocolate and actually tasty, unlike those those chalky 
nasty competitors. Built Bar is low calorie, low sugar, low in net carbs, but also high in protein. That's the kind of equation you want to do. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Well, after Missouri added Sean East and also Demoy Hodge from Cleveland State, Sean East being from junior college, also via UMass and Bradley previously, well, Missouri was technically over the scholarship limit for a while, but then East St. Louis guard Christian Jones, I neglected to mention this in the previous episode after teasing it, I apologize for that, but Jones, a sort of lanky, about six foot four, point guard, maybe combo guard, depending on who you talk to. But he seemed like more of a lead guard with some real athletic potential. But unfortunately, it just seems like once again that Conzo Martin, this was obviously a Martin recruit previously, just another guy that was maybe a little bit of a project. And long term, maybe Jones will turn out to be a good player. And there are elements of his game that I like quite a bit, and I won't bore you with this with the the specific details of that because, frankly, Jones is no longer with the Missouri program. But point being, if the idea that guys like Jordan Wilmore and Yaya Keita, who is also transferring out of the program, by the way, if the idea is those type of guys and guys like Christian Jones, well, they're going to be projects, and they need to develop for a season or two. I just don't know how that works in modern day college basketball. If essentially we're going to have half assed free agency, pardon my French, for every single offseason, this kind of player movement, I got to think this sort of player movement under the Tigers right now, surely this isn't going to be the norm, right? I mean, this is this is a new coach taking over a new program and obviously trying to put his tiger paw prints all over it. But you can't do this every year and have any type of continuity. But at the same time, it just makes so much more sense to recruit at the highest level in terms of high school players. Guys like Aiden Shaw, of course you still want to take guys like that. But projects from high school, I just don't know that you have the luxury of being that patient anymore. I also think As I've said before, I think if you're a coach these days, I think it's fair to shorten your time horizon a little bit. If back in the day, maybe the maybe the conventional wisdom was, hey, give a guy four or five years. Well, I think two or three, you can get a pretty good idea at this point if a coach is going to work out. And Missouri's actually seen this in the recent past. I think after two or three years, we knew it with Kim Anderson, for instance, not to pile on him for the for the for the one thousandth time, but I think that's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. But ultimately, obviously, just a tremendous amount of player movement. I mentioned Des Moines Hodge from Cleveland State coming in. I mentioned Sean East, the point guard, and I was a lot more positive about Hodge. And I was a little bit concerned about East seeming, at least on paper, seeming inability of scoring the basketball. And you know what? Nick Honor now, our latest guy from Clemson, the newest transfer, another point guard. So he played his freshman year at Fordham, where he absolutely played a ton of minutes, about 90% of the available minutes for Fordham, decided to transfer up a level to the ACC. And frankly, by the way, you look at his first year at Fordham, he was probably forced to take entirely too many shots. But even in that first year, it seems like he established himself as a pure point guard that can take care of and distribute the ball effectively. Even in the ACC, by the way, of course, his first, his previous two seasons at Clemson. And one thing I will say that gives me a little bit of hope for his offense. It seems like his two point shooting has gotten progressively better. And also he's a good free throw shooter. So again, that gives me a little bit of hope that there's a tiny bit more upside offensively plus 34% as a career, as a three point shooter, not too shabby. I do worry a little bit five foot 10, you know, maybe that that five inches that Sean East, I believe, has. I believe he's about six foot three, 
Again, Nick Honor from Clemson, now the Missouri Tiger, five foot ten. I wonder if that gives East a little bit of an advantage to start defensively. I think we've seen that Dennis Gates does prefer some length all over the court, but especially in the back court. I would like to see each guy play, you know, just quite a bit and just see how the game sort of plays out to just see who, who gets the most minutes, you know. I, I, it's tough for me to say. I, I need to see both guys defensively for sure. I can I get a decent idea statistically offensively of what most players are like if they've had a decent sample size like the, these guys have. But to me, the defensive individual statistics, especially in college basketball, are almost worthless. I, I, I don't believe any of them at all. So give me the eye test over individual defensive stats. It's hard to argue with the team stuff, but the individual stuff, to me, that's just really hard to parse out. So again, we'll have to figure all that out. But it seems like combined with Sean East, now Nick Honor, the point guard position for the Tigers next year should at least be workable. I don't know that it's going to be special by any stretch of the imagination. And who knows, maybe Caleb Brown in his sophomore season on campus can find a little bit more of a workable scoring game in the paint too, because if he can do that, he suddenly becomes a little bit more of an interesting player to me, especially at that size. And coming up, Missouri had been kicking the tires on a former Missouri high school center that ended up playing high major basketball in the state of Indiana. We're going to talk about that young man coming up. But first, I want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto and with the number of makes and models on the road these days, it's pretty hard to keep up with all of that stuff in your mind, right? Who can who can keep all these numbers and different models in their mind? You're probably questioning which mind, which model of car you actually have. Well, guess what? Your local auto parts store can't keep up with the inventory for all these different vehicles. So why would you endure the pointless searching around the aisles, maybe asking the 18 year old kid at the counter who probably doesn't know what the heck he's talking about instead just go out to your vehicle figure out what kind of model you have and plug it in to rockauto.com's easy to navigate website Pro i promise you folks it really is that simple when you do so you'll find exactly what you need whether it's a tail lamp motor oil or even a new carpet for your interior you'll get multiple different options no matter what kind of price point you're looking for so go to rockauto.com right now see all the parts available for your vehicle and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com <laughs> When the Butler Bulldogs made a coaching change, well, former Fort Zumwalt North center Connor Tur Turnbull decided to look around, entered the transfer portal, but it turns out instead of going to Mizzou or possibly being a St. Louis Billiken, he's decided to recommit to the Bulldogs, so he'll be staying with Butler in the Big East. It would have been an interesting player from, from Missouri, certainly. Missouri could use some rim protection, I would say. A, a true center with some experience would be nice next year. No doubt about that. I think Turnbull, at least according to himself, shot blocking is his calling card. So maybe that would have been a good fit for the Tigers, but obviously nobody was able to pluck him away from Butler. Well, at least yet, right? Who knows with the transfer portal and who knows with eligibility at this point, he could be around another year for all, for all I know. But anyway, let's move just quickly to the NBA here and Quinn Snyder. I bet a lot of you Missouri fans are probably thinking, ah, Quinn Snyder, what a story. And you're right. It is a heck of a story. Quinn's done very, very well with the jazz, but what you might not be aware of is that his seat is quite a bit hotter than you might be expecting because I hate to say it, the Jazz have just seemingly hit a bit of a snag. They just can't solve small ball. When Rudy Gobert, seemingly one of the best defensive players in the NBA, the center, well, when teams essentially take their center off the court, make Rudy Gobert defend all 25 feet 
from the interior to that three-point line. It just seems like they have no answer for that. Plus, with sort of the constant two small guys in the backcourt defensively, there's maybe something wrong there. But that sort of that sort of thing is actually out of Quinn Snyder's control to certain a certain point. What is he supposed to do? Just bench Rudy Gobert? That's the easiest way to get yourself fired right there. Management's paying him a maximum contract, huge amounts of money. That's not going to go over well. So essentially, Quinn Snyder's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And to me, it seems like either he gets fired, there's a mutual agreement that he moves on. Now, don't get me wrong, Quinn's going to land on his feet. If he wants to, He'll have a job next season, without a doubt. There will definitely be a team, possibly the Los Angeles Lakers. Hey, there's a prediction for you. How about Quinn Snyder to the Los Angeles Lakers? I'm not predicting that at this point, but just as I said that, that actually makes a ton of sense to me. Lakers are going to be in the market for a new coach. Who knows if they're going to be able to get rid of Russell Westbrook. So again, this is how the NBA works sometimes. If you can't get rid of the players, well, hey, let's just get a new coach and Hopefully, somehow that will work, even though really Quinn Snyder didn't do anything wrong. Frank Vogel didn't do anything wrong with the Los Angeles Lakers. But what the heck, Snyder, who sort of started his NBA journey once again with Kobe Bryant and the Lakers 10, 15, some odd years ago, his journey back to being a head coach. That actually checks a lot of boxes to me. I could totally see that happening. And Snyder actually seems like a guy that might get along fairly well with LeBron James. So, hey, how about that for an early prediction? Look out for Quinn Snyder to the Lakers. If it happens, you heard it here first. But you know what? Thanks again for joining me and making this your first listen. How about you make your second listen? Locked on the NFL Draft. Go to their YouTube page in particular. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to want to do that because during the NFL draft, all three days, they're going to have live coverage, live commentary. It's going to be really good stuff. By the way, right now, the Odyssey NFL mock draft is happening. The playmaker, Michael Irvin, is involved. Matt Williamson of Peacock and Williamson. All kinds of good stuff happening. Again, that's locked on the NFL draft. Follow it wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mizzou. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.